I want you to imagine how tough a life this would be. A father dropped out of school in the third grade and a mother dropped out in high school. Little girl is one of 12 children. She had to share two beds in the dirt floor shack that she lived in that didn't even have running water. She didn't have proper shoes, so if it snowed, she just had to skip school. She herself dropped out of school in the ninth grade, got married at the age of 16, and had three kids by the time she was 21. She worked at McDonald's for all of a half day, one half day. Didn't that work out too well? But then she decided she wanted a better life, so she got a GED. She went on to a community college, then graduated magna cum laude from Roanoke College, got a master's degree from Virginia Tech, and a PhD in political science from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, then a master of legal studies from Yale. She's taught at Princeton and Vanderbilt universities. If I've ever known someone who defied expectations and refused to be a victim, it's our first guest, a dear friend, a true American hero, and one of the most dynamic people in the country. I want you to welcome Dr. Carol Swain. You brought your fan club with you. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why anybody wouldn't love you. You know, one of the things that I wanted to make sure that people understood your story, because those who say that uh, if a person is a person of color, they ain't got a shot in this country. Your story proves them wrong. Well, I wasn't raised to see myself as a victim. Hmm. And despite that poverty, my mother just, I mean, she had that Protestant work ethic at the time that I was growing up in the rural South, she uh, did not want us to take handouts. And I had people that came into my life and encouraged me, and I got a high school equivalency. I went to a community college and got the first of five degrees. I never sought to become a university professor. My only goal was to get a better job. Huh. I worked in fast food. I've worked in nursing homes. I've sold things from door to door. I've been a sales clerk. I've had a real life, and that's why I have common sense, and I understand America. <laughs> well, there's no doubt about the common sense, and no doubt you understand America. You've written a book called Black Eye for America, How Critical Race Theory is Burning Down the House. We hear every day critical race theories being pushed in schools. For the average person out there who hears that term but doesn't know what it means, what does that mean? Well, let me tell you, too, why I wrote that book, and it's co-authored with a young man that started off as a research assistant for me, mm -hmm. has a Ph.D. from Georgetown. He's Christian, he's a Marine, and, um, and conservative, which means it would be very difficult for him to get a job as a professor. <laughs> <laughs> That's an understatement, I'm sure. Well, I mean, yeah. it's true, yeah. and I'm hoping that this book will help change his life. Yeah. But I had so many people contacted me about critical race theory and how to fight back against it. Uh, critical race theory has Marxist roots. It's rooted in Marxism. And it is a very divisive um, philosophy that started on university campuses and law schools in the 1970s. And it then it permeated every field of the universities and rested in departments of education. And so most of the teachers that are coming out of schools of ed they are steeped in critical race theory. And it divides the world into oppressors and the oppressed. And white people in America are labeled as oppressors because of the color of their skin. And minorities are all seen as victims. And, and that is uh, something that I, I argue in that book. The book explains what critical race theory is, where it came from, and who some of the early pioneers of critical race theory and its roots to Marxism. And we also talk about how it's un-American, how it runs counter to our constitution and civil rights laws. And I have two chapters on strategies to fight back against it. And so critical race theory is a racist uh, theory. Uh, white people may not know it, but you're protected by the Civil Rights Act. <laughs> <laughs> there are probably a lot of people that don't know that. 
They think it is only for people of color, but it's for everybody, isn't it? It is for everybody, and you're also protected by the Equal Protection Clause of the Constitution. <laughs> well, now, when you say that, <laughs> how is it that people's basic fundamental civil rights are being violated by critical race theory and its implementation? You know, what's really interesting to me is that Congress is full of lawyers, right? At one time, yeah, it was like 40% of members yeah. of Congress were lawyers, and so they should know the Constitution, they should know civil rights laws, uh, and they should know what it means to be an American. And in America, we don't shame and bully people because of the color of their skin. We know that that's not something that Americans do. Yet, with critical race theory, white people are being told that it is acceptable for their children to be bullied, to be shamed, and uh, we find the situation where hostile workplaces hostile and hostile learning environments are being created. And again, that's unacceptable. It's something that people should push back against. And I don't understand how with so many learned people hmm. running our country that they would try to pull this over on the American people. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. taught us to disregard people's color and focus on character. We're totally savaging that, and now it's all about color and nothing about character. It seemed like it just happened that fast. Well, it did, and it started with the election of President Obama, and that's when we saw the Marxism begin to just um, uh, take over the college campuses. It was always there, but then after that, you saw the political correctness, the safe spaces, the trigger warnings, and the various manifestations. Uh, and then we saw it uh, seep into the uh, K through 12. And the diversity, equity, inclusion, uh, the, they call it educational equity, culturally sensitive learning, all of those things uh, began during the Obama administration, the restorative justice. And restorative justice on its face just like social justice that you know is in the churches, mm -hmm. it's, it's among the Southern Baptists, all of those things, you know, they have nice sounding names and the, the words don't mean what they meant, you know, like even three years ago, they keep changing the meanings of words. And so um, these things have happened, they've taken root and it's something that we have to understand. And so knowledge is power, we have a constitution. We have free speech. Mm. We have a Declaration of Independence, and we need to reread those documents and stand on our values and principles. Well, thank you for helping <laughs> us you. do that. And you can follow Dr. Swain on Twitter, at Carol M. Swain, also through her website, bethepeoplenews.com. Make sure you educate yourself by picking up Dr. Swain's new book, Black Eye for America.